Hello, I'm Mark Baer. You're watching Conversations and Collaborations. My guest today, great photographer, Thomas O'Neill. We, we've had a, uh, a, a number of recent conversations lately, and uh, I guess about a, a year ago, I, I, I stopped you at a party on the beach, mm -hmm. and uh, because I had seen this wonderful spread of photographs that you had done in Carmel Magazine of, of, the, of um, you know, ocean scenes. And, uh, and it's one of those things in photography that you'll look at a, uh, you'll look at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures and what differentiates that the one is so, it's, it's such an odd quality or it's such a, it, it, it's, it's a, such a mystery to me what, what, what separates the, the photographer that makes you go wow from, um, from the mass and mass of, of images that were exposed to. And I saw these beautiful photographs. I didn't even see that they were yours. And I, I saw them. I started looking at these things and going, wow, that's just something special. That was the start of a, of a, of a, of a new conversation that we've been having. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, just a quick summary. Uh, in, my, in next June, um, yes. the weekend of... Uh, 16th, 17th, and 18th will be the 50th anniversary of the Monterey Pop 50th Festival. 50th anniversary, man. It's like boom, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I've, I've been watching the videos and all the music still sounds like... Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, you were, you were instrumental in uh, getting all those interviews about it. Yeah. And that's also where, the, through you, I met... Uh, that day, I met Harvey Kubernick and his yeah. brother, Kenneth, and, and uh, now we're... We're working on a book. So this is, uh, um, just for our, our audience here, uh, this was uh, the exhibit we had, Summer of Love, at the Museum of Monterey. Uh, Lisa Casino uh, was uh, the uh, curator of it. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a really great event. Yeah, it was. And you were there, and you were backstage, and you talked about, you know, uh, shooting Jimi Hendrix and all these things. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, which is which is great, but I don't want to dwell there. I want to talk about moving forward, uh, keeping a life in art, and, and a life in photography is is uh, you know there aren't many artists that have been photographers their whole way through. Uh, it's a tough it's a tough gig, isn't it? It is, it is, and that's the one of the things that um, that we're bringing out in the book is the fact that uh, I did get started. Uh, during that era of the late 60s, and it, my career lasted about eight or nine years. Uh, I went um, pretty strong uh, doing album covers and working with rock and roll bands for that time, and then kind of gave it up for a while. But I didn't give up photography. I just kind of switched my, my motivation, and it, basically it's because I moved out of the area. I came up here to this this part of the world here on the peninsula, and there's not a lot of music <laughs> going on in terms of recording studios and that kind of thing. So I, I got into commercial photography. But I have been in photography ever since. Uh, you know, my career more or less was launched by the Monterey Pop. And there was a number of other photographers that had that same kind of opportunity, but they stayed with rock and roll even up to today. You know, some of them are still doing CD covers and things like that, or, or they're they're still involved or vinyl now since it's coming back. So, yeah, I had that that one time, and then I went on. And so, again, in the book, we're talking about uh, what Monterey was and how that launched a career for me, and then the aftermath of that, and which is leading right up to this moment as we're talking, because. I'm still a very active photographer. You're an active photographer, and you're also a. Uh, a, a f being a photographer doesn't always imply being an artist. Uh, Good point. You, no, it doesn't. you know it's not. There are two separate things, but you've always been an artist as well, and you've had an artist's eye and a uh, an eye for uh, pattern, for form, for color, yes. uh, for uh, for movement. Uh, I mean, that's w one of the things that, uh, and, and clarity, I guess one of the things I like about your work is it's always very clean, you know, your, mm. your, your sense of framing, your sense of these things. I, 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 I don't feel like your work is done 
you know, I, I don't know what's what's done in the in the lab behind the scenes, but I think you probably have a pretty complete picture when you when you shoot. I mean, is that? Yeah, I do. It, yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know, in a sense, there's really two kinds of photographers. Um, there's the the artistic witness. You know, it just walks around and and all of a sudden there's these just these visual moments that are it's part theater and. And, and and just part explosion of color and all these kind of things, you know, where it's 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 a huge distraction at time, you know, when you're just looking at things in terms of form and light and color. I've always said that a, photo a photograph is nothing more than the interpretation of the light that you choose and the angle of view. And sometimes you don't have time to do all that. So uh, that leads into the other type of photography, is, which is basically being a documentarian. So if there's something that happens, and, and that's what most people are, they're documentarians. I mean, if there's something that's a unique moment in their life, and all of a sudden their cell phone comes out, and most of them aren't sitting there thinking, well, let's see, um, there's a little bit of light in the back, maybe I'll, I'll move over here, uh, you know, and then uh, don't, can't forget the law of thirds, and let's see, what's the, what's the key the key message in this photo, what do I really want to say, uh, should I have that, you know, all these things that you think about when you're creating a photo, you know, that most people don't do that. They just go, oh my gosh, this is, this is something that I want to remember. Click. And I do that. I mean, there are times where I see something and there literally is no time to, to have any sense of uh, composition or anything like that. But when I do, that's when the magic happens. That's when the music happens. That's the concert. That's the symphony. And, and I hear a lot of photographs quite often when I get into that zone and I have the time where it's just me and it. And that is a very, very special moment. So we're talking about stuff that inspires you. And, and recently you, were, you pulled out your phone and you showed me um, uh, this uh, Turkish uh, photography. Uh, He's actually an, um, an architect uh -huh. in, in, in um, Istanbul. But he photographs buildings. How do you pronounce his name? In, in a very minimalist way. And it's Yener Turan. I've never seen anybody that shoots like this. It's fantastic. Yeah. You know, there's basically, uh, there's some great photographers on, um, on so many of the social medias. Uh, Pinterest has some great stuff. Gets a little overwhelming at times. But there's a few people I follow on Instagram. Another guy, uh, Kurt Arrigo, he, he lives in, um, in Malaga. You know, and he's in the, close to the water a lot. His stuff is unbelievable. You know, he has tremendous sense of design, and his uh, photos are very, very, very dynamic. And then there's another guy that I've been following. Uh, he, he uses a lot of, of post-production in terms of color. A guy named Jude Allen. I mean, y you look at his stuff, and it it's, it definitely goes beyond uh, a being that uh, being a photograph and then is much more of a, a graphic image or a painting than a photograph when you look at it. I mean, the, it's mostly landscapes. Very rarely will he use people or anything like that. But anyway, this guy is, he's amazing. So I like to follow them. Now, my influences uh, from photographers, some of my favorites were uh, Richard Abaddon. The guy was amazing. Uh, and Irving Penn, probably yeah. more than Abaddon, mm -hmm. Irving Penn was mm -hmm. somebody that had a tremendous influence on me. And he could cross over quite well. He could photograph people in a way that was just, just so, so beautiful in terms of connectivity and drawing them in right into his camera. And then he could photograph still objects in a way that they were just magnificent. And, and some very simply. I mean, he, he did a whole, a whole series on cigarette butts. Fantastic, and, you know? and and these guys, Avedon in particular. What I what I liked, which some people don't admire, but I do admire people who can cross over from fashion to fine art, and back and forth, and yeah. the and and his uh, like an Avedon, his his fashion photography took on the a documentary quality. Yeah, his his art photography had had elements of glamour. Uh, he'd, he'd take one element from one thing and, and the other element, and it would, it cro it would cross, his work would uh, cross-pollinate itself. Uh, it's, I like that word you use, cross-pollinate, because uh, I, I use that same type of analogy uh, in a way 
um, of, cro of the crossover because in this area uh, I photograph uh, quite a few weddings um, and I also do fashion work and I do social photography, commercial photography. And I will use a technique from each of those. And, and, and fine and, art. So, so there, and there, switch them back so, and so forth. So there, there's the force, because the, the fine art is at, at the core of, 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 of what, the rest of it. If, and if, the fine art is in all your work. Yeah. And when I, when I approach um, a commercial job with the attitude of, of making it fine art, that's when the client really responds. Um, if, if, I mean, well, that's why they hire you because you can get anybody to take a picture of something. Yeah. Sometimes it's a little bit of a gamble. That's the only thing. But yeah. when I get a client yeah. that I, that I, that I feel connected to, and I know they're going to trust me, when I push it a little bit, uh, I've all, I, well, here's what I, I should go back and say: I play it safe uh -huh. at first. I do kind of like I take the conservative approach, like, okay, this is what they asked for. This is what they what they're getting. Okay, I got that. Now I'm going to take it further. And I would say almost always, it's that shot where I took it a little bit beyond what they asked for and started stretching it and started putting more in the, my own interpretation, trying to think, it, think of it more painterly, um, using selective focus in the background, but breaking the rules a little bit in terms of a commercial photograph. And I always love it when they, when they see that and they go, wait a minute, I really like that. It feels pretty good. I work in a, in a number of different mediums, and I, you know, and I know what I'm doing. But I had, I said, but what do I do? <laughs> you know, it's like, what am I doing? What, what's what's the essence of what yeah. it is that I'm about? And and the answer came to me that I'm about attitude. For whatever it is, there's a certain thing that I'll put into everything I do that's that defines what I'm doing more than any medium that I'm doing. And I, I think that's um, something that you and I both have in common. You have boundaries. Uh, we, we generally work within boundaries. And sometimes I just ignore the boundaries, that's all. And I keep going. And sometimes I think uh, this could be a little risky. I think most artists, uh, you know, they have to, th they think it's somewhere along that line. But it, you know, like I told you a little while ago, just about, you know, with some commercial clients, you know, I say, okay, I'll do the, the shot that I know they're going to say, okay, that's it. But I want to go further than that. I don't want, okay, that's it. I want, wow, that's fantastic. That's what I want. This is Mark Baer. You're watching Conversations and Collaborations. I'm with Tom O'Neill, and we will be right back. You are watching Conversations and Collaborations. For all episodes, go to markdavidbear.com. I'm Mark Bear. I'm with Tom O'Neill. You're watching Conversations and Collaborations. Let's, let's go back to those photographs that I saw about a year ago that, that just blew my mind. Let's, let's talk about what you were up to. Uh, Molly and I lived in Carmel for about a year and a half or so. And when we first got down there, um, we were in that section they call the Golden Rectangle. It's about four blocks from the, the beach. And so I originally just would go down for a morning walk with, it, with my dog. And I'd been out of Carmel Beach plenty of times, but all of a sudden I started to see the, the way the ocean moved up on the beach in a different way. First of all, the storms hadn't come in. Uh, it was the year El Nino was happening, so it wasn't that stormy. And so the waves were kind of gentle. And I started looking at them, and I, I, it just, they had this beautiful calming effect. And almost they were like massaging the, massaging the, the sand. And, and I thought, I got I to gotta get this somehow. You know? And then I thought, if I'm going to photograph the ocean, why should I try and freeze it? The ocean has never stopped moving from the very first moment it was an ocean, right? So I started to shoot in a way in which I could move with the waves. Now, it really helped that we didn't have these big pounding waves of you know, heavy surf. The waves were kind of gentle. And so I developed a way in which I could move almost at the same speed as the waves as, as they came in. And I would take a series of maybe four or five, six shots on one frame with a very, very quick shutter on, um, on with each shot so that each image just slightly overlapped 
one on top of the other. And being digital, you know, it wasn't too hard to figure out to get the exposure right. And then the camera kind of does, a, you know, a lot by itself, which you can rely on. But I started to get these images that all of a sudden were not razor sharp. They were quite painterly. But they kind of showed this beautiful calm that, that the ocean was giving to me. And then I started playing around a little bit more with the color and all that, and I realized, I'm painting. I'm painting. This is, each one of these is a canvas. And so I took the dog home and came back and started shooting again. And I found myself going down there two or three times well, a thing, day. I think that's what I responded to is the painterly aspect of it. Yeah. You know, when you responded, you t used this word that, you know, really, really touched me. You said that it showed immersion. I mean, <laughs> interesting that I was shooting water, but, you know, uh, a body of water. But, I mean, I was immersed in, the, in this process. I became obsessed with it. And I was starting to use different lenses, different techniques. But the whole idea was to get this painterly quality, which just suggested the movement but still showed the imagery of the waves. And uh, even if there was a surfer out in the water or a paddle border, you could still make them out. People walking down on the beach, you could still see they were human forms, but you really couldn't identify the people. That's what I wanted. And uh, very impressionistic. And um, uh, about six months before I started this, Molly and I had been at the Monet Museum in uh, Giverny. And uh, I'd never really had a chance to look at Manet's work up, up close, but uh, it, maybe there was a little bit of that influencing me. But I just, I just felt like I had this opportunity to paint with the camera, and it was euphoric at moments. When I'd see what I got, and then I'd go back, and I'd, I didn't do too much in the computer. I'd started downloading them, but I, I haven't been that happy doing my own type of photography in a long time. There's a euphoria that happens, you know, and it's... Uh, I don't know exactly what happens in the mind, but uh, there's serotonin levels and all kinds of neurotransmitters that are definitely moving in a different way than when we're doing something day-to-day -day that's more mundane. It was an exciting, exciting time. And then all of a sudden, it was over because I got sidetracked doing something else. So it's, I, I was just down at the beach the other day, and there was no desire to go down there and try it. it this tremendous rush of energy just came on like a storm and had me doing it, forced me to do it, put me in it, immersed me. I guess that's what I'm looking for, is that, is, is that kind of timeless, spaceless, falling into the thing, uh, yeah. losing self into the, the image and, and, and using the, um, the medium of art. I mean, I, I just think um, how impoverished, I guess how lucky we are to found this one secret that having some kind of, you know, working through any medium, it makes everything in the world more interesting. And when you're actually working in it uh, and it's happening, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty addictive. It's very addictive. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's it's always, um, y you know, that that's one of the things. Again, a lot of people talk to you, and they talk to you. Well, you used to do this, and you used to do that, and you used to do this. You're always, that, you're never in the rear view. You know, you're always, you're always straight ahead, and that's, uh, you know, I think that's a necessary quality. I think. Uh, you know, you and I, uh, when we were uh, talking last time, I think we talked about Picasso, yeah. and, we, and we talked about that urge, that life force that keeps you at this. And we, ha you know, to do something that you you you're excited every day to wake up to do this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes it just takes it takes um, it takes a hold of you, and you know, it owns you. And at least with me, and, and, and sometimes it, it does get in the way. I'll, I'll tell you something happened a few years ago. Uh, I was, I'm sure people know about these. Uh, you can buy one of these plastic bottles with a little, um, it's like a stainless steel, looks like a little ball of, of wires. 
and uh, it almost looks like the AT&T logo, but or like a little wire globe inside this plastic bottle with a lid on it, and you can put liquid in there and maybe some protein powder, and you can shake it up, and this little wire thing breaks it all up. Anyway, um, I had uh, I took one of these out and put it on the kitchen counter, and the way the sun was coming in, it cast the most beautiful shadow on this thing, and uh, the shadow of all the lines from this this kind of um, these spirals uh, hit the tile, and all of a sudden, I was taken away. I mean, I had I ran and got my camera, and for the next hour and a half, I just kept moving this and coming in real close and shooting it. I totally got distracted. I mean, I lost all sense of time. I couldn't have been happier. I got some pretty incredible graphic shots. I printed them up, put them all next to each other. It's pretty strong. But I had some other things I was supposed to do. I kind of got in trouble that I didn't get those things done. But this, the, the need to satisfy this, this urge. I'm so used to being in trouble that these things, yeah. that doesn't even occur to me. <laughs> I, I, it just, it, just um, it took over. So, and I, so it gets in the way. If I go on a trip with my wife, I'm kind of allowed some time to go take pictures, but for the most part, I'll see something. And when I get in that, that space of, of just seeing form and shape and graphics, uh, I, I'm, it, it's, it's hard to deal with because I, I sit there and I have this search. I've got to come in there. I mean, I can pull a nice graphic image out of, you know, almost anything at times. We, I, I've got done Photoshops where I, we really, I have another photographer, Jerry Geiger, we, we work together on it. We call basically call it uh, pulling a photograph out of nothing. I mean, you walk by something and people, you can say, what's that over there? And, and uh, well, nothing. And then you can go in there and see something. And just by cropping it in on a certain way, all of a sudden you've got this beautiful image. And people say, oh, my God, I didn't see that. There. So, so what you're telling me then is it's not so much about the camera, the equipment, the blah, blah, blah. It's about seeing. Oh, it's all about it, seeing. It's all about your eye and it's all about seeing. It's from here. Yeah, and that's sure. the, and that gets, um, do you feel you're, you're getting better? Getting better at? At all of this, at, at seeing, at the, at, oh, the, at, yeah, the, no, at, at the art, at the. You know, I look at some of my pictures that I took when I first uh, started painting and, and when, I, when I was still in college, and uh, I spent just a little bit of time in a, time in a uh, design course with the, using the camera. I'd never really tried too much. I didn't have any darkroom practice or anything like that. But uh, I had a 35 millimeter camera that I borrowed from my design teacher. And I went out uh, into the streets of Chicago and I started taking pictures. And I look at some of those and they're, they're not bad because they had some of the fundamental principles of painting and design. But I've gotten a lot better. Yeah, I mean it's it's grown, and I and I I've gotten better at realizing the process. Before I just I just went and shot. I didn't know that it was happening, and now I do. And you know, and, and I've heard wonderful things that inspire. Like years ago, from a sculptor down in uh, that I met in Mexico, actually an American, uh, a guy by the name of Anato McLaughlin, fabulous, super creative, wonderful guy, and he told me about. A, a saying that he had heard from a, a um, from a Mexican sculptor, much older than he was, and he said, "When you create from the heart, your hands will follow." And that resonated with me so much. And when I actually think about, you mentioned seeing, you know, I like to, I've told people in some of my workshops that when you're driving down the road and you see cars coming, and you're looking at the road and making sure you're staying on the road. You're just, you're looking at things, and that's with your eyes. I call that looking. But when we actually start to see, and the, the art of seeing happens when something is triggered here. So you're driving down the road, and all of a sudden, there's this spectacular sunset coming up over this mountain. And you've got to pull over to the side of the road and get out and look at it, draw it, photograph it. But now you are you are seeing with your heart. It's all happening here. And when that happens, that, that's when I referred to earlier, that's the magic, that's the symphony, that's the concert. 
that's when it all takes off. And, and the, cam the camera becomes just the excuse to have those moments because they don't... It's a tool. It creates a, 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 it, it, it creates a, a, you know, an image, but it also, you might not step over and, and look at it the same way if you didn't have this tool to oh, oh, yeah. operate. Oh, yeah. No, you know, it, 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 that, that tool focuses your whole... I mean, it's it's like a poem in words. If if I would see something, and if I didn't have a poem to put it in, I'd, I'd see an image or a metaphor uh, that would just fly away. It wouldn't have a it wouldn't no, have no, a yeah. use. Yeah, no, it's it's the camera in that instance is a pad and paper for the poem. I mean, it's yeah. it's um, I mean, a pad and paper and a pencil. I mean, it it's a way of recording and. And it, that you if you work hand in hand with it. I mean, yeah. you've got this thing, and then you get this. The neat thing about digital, you get this immediate reference, and now you can take it a little bit further, and you see that, and then you you can change this, change that. I love one thing about um, digital photography that you really don't get with film photography, uh, even though I think film is much more of a pure type of photography. But you get the chance to finesse the moment, finesse the experience. Oh wow! Let's see. Maybe I'll just try it a little bit more like this, or I'll, I'll increase the exposure, or I'll underexpose it a little bit more. You know, something like that. It's a it's a wonderful t wonderful tool, but it's it's the it, it adds to the process. But the real process, I think, is the they call it the journey, the experience, the journey of creating it. But the thing that happens here, quite honestly, where everything, everything, your entire body is in this wonderful, wonderful harmonic state. When you get to that, where you are there in that zone, and, and it's the same place as Michelangelo, and Da Vinci, and Picasso, and Cezanne, and... and that's the drug. That's the drug. Yeah. And there are a lot of guys today, and a lot of women, uh, but they, they have it too. I mean, it's, and I don't think this will ever go away, but if you get an opportunity to open up those channels, so you can experience this. I mean, it, there's nothing better. And then what you get is this thing, this beautiful thing, and you get to share it. And then people see it, and then they're moved. Just like when I saw when I saw your your show there at a Museum of uh, Monterey Museum, um, where you had things on the floor, and you had them, you know, all multimedia, and you had the TV monitors and everything, and you're dancing and all this. I mean, it, it was fabulous. Man. You put me into that. You put me into that space, and I got lost. That's where we I, live. I, I got lost in the beautiful world of, of Mark Bear. It, in what you created, e everything there that I was experiencing came right out of your mind and from your heart. And that's what it's all about. Well, we live a charmed life here. We're very lucky when we get to do that. Yeah. You know? With Tom O'Neill, this is Mark Bear, conversations and collaborations. Thank you, and uh, adios. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Conversations and Collaborations. For all episodes, go to markdavidbear.com. See it now. Don't wait. Mm -hmm.